Come on, who's ready to move forward in their life today? Anybody in the house? Amen. We've had a lot of fun this morning. We're going to jump right into what God talks about and God says. And I want to say again to, uh, like I said, all the fathers, the single mothers in the room that fill both purposes and both roles. Happy Father's Day. We're honored to be with you today and, uh, and, and, and uh, just celebrate you. So hopefully you'll hang out a little bit afterwards, enjoy some of the festivities we have. Hopefully you've enjoyed a little bit today. But I want to jump right into the second week of our new series called The Secret Weapon. And The Secret Weapon is all about the Holy Spirit spirit. Because a lot of us are very versed and, and taught and understand a lot about God the Father and how God the Father loves us with a fatherly love. And, and for some people that's hard to grasp because of the negative uh, uh, image or view of your earthly father, right? And, and that's okay, but our, our Heavenly Father is so much better than anything we could ever imagine. And so we're versed in have, uh, God the Father. And then most of us know about the redemption and the sacrifice and the salvation of God the Son through Jesus. But a lot of us kind of discount God the Holy Spirit because God the Holy Spirit is hard to understand. Uh, if we're honest, you maybe you've grown up in a church that has made it uh, the Holy Spirit weird to you and things like that. And the truth is, is that it is very much like a Harley that just sits in the garage of our life that we never crank up. Is If we live this life without the power of the Holy Spirit within us and behind us and we never crank it up and we never live it out, I'm here to tell you there are things in your life that God has placed there to accomplish that will never come to fruition simply because we will not live in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so my goal over the next three weeks and or next two weeks in, in this series is that we would become understanding of the Holy Spirit and we would ask the Holy Spirit to walk with us on a daily basis as we watch God do something amazing in our lives and as we watch God move in an incredible, incredible way. And so if you would, go ahead and turn in or on your Bibles to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 is the verse that we're really, or the chapter we're really going to hang out in today. If you don't have your Bibles, that's okay. It's going to pop up on the screen. And we're okay with that. If you need to use your phones or anything, don't worry about that here at Radiate Church. We are a church for all people. We love everybody. And uh, so I want to tell you a quick story. I, uh, last year, uh, we moved offices and so I do a lot of work now, uh, kind of remote. And so I was traveling a little bit at the beginning of this week, and I had some time that I needed to work on a few things. And so I went to a Starbucks, which seems to be my go-to place a lot of times when I go to work. And I know that's hard for you guys to believe that I, if you've been here a while, that I would go to Starbucks. I know that's difficult. Uh, but I was at Starbucks, and I tend to take up a lot of room whenever I'm in a place. So I need a, a fairly large open area to put all my stuff. So I sit down at this little circle table, about the only thing that was available, right? I have my laptop out because I do most of my work on a laptop or an iPad, but normally it's a laptop. So I got it out. I got it opened up. I'm researching. I'm typing some things, you know, uh, returning some emails. And I got a Bible and a book sitting over here. And I got my phone sitting over here. And I got it, at the, I got it just laid out perfect, right? And then I'm drinking my white chocolate mocha with my double shot of espresso. Ha, 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 right? It's a manly drink. Don't judge me. And uh, so you got all these things. And, and I was running out of room. And as I was running out of room for my coffee, I had it sitting over here, and I just kind of said, I need a little bit more room for my book and my Bible. And so I shoved and, and slid the, the coffee cup kind of back a little bit, but when I did, it went behind my, my laptop, right? Now, you know that a cup of coffee at Starbucks cost approximately $15, and so we went, and that was a joke, it's not really that much. Some of you are like, oh, really? That's why I don't go there. Um, no, and so I slide it back there, right, and, and I'm working, I'm working, and after a few minutes, I forget that the coffee's back there. And so I need more room in front of my laptop now because I'm about to read something else, so I need to open something else up in front of my laptop so that I can type as I'm reading, right? Anybody ever done anything like that? So I take my, book, my, my laptop, you know where this is going, and I slide it back, and my cup lands on the floor. It runs out of real estate on the table. Now, you would have thought in the room that everybody, all the coffee snobs in the room were like, Oh my goodness! I thought they were going to call the cops. They stared at me and they judged me in the moment. It was bad. It was the loudest noise I've ever heard a cup make when it fell off a table. That is true. I even had on headphones and I heard the thing fall, right? So... It falls, it spills out on the floor, I'm freaking out because I just spent $25 on a cup of coffee that's now laying on the floor, and then everybody around me is judging me, right? So I go and I get a bunch of napkins, I clean it up, but the lid never falls off, so I just finish drinking what's left in the cup, right? But when the cup falls off the table, right, what do you think fell out of the cup? Y'all are like, this is a trick question, I don't know if I should answer. No, you're right, what you're thinking is, is right. So what fell out of the coffee cup whenever the coffee cup fell off the table? coffee of course it did why 
because coffee was in the cup, right? It would have been really weird if I'd have been drinking coffee in the cup and then when it fell, uh, apple juice came fall, come, come, come falling out, right? Or, 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 or orange juice or water or something like that, right? Why? Because whenever you, ta- whenever you bump a cup or knock a cup over, guess what spills out of the cup? Whatever's in the cup. For most of us, when we get bumped in life, a lot of times we don't like what comes out of our life. We don't like the reaction. We don't like, like the testimony that we have. We don't like the way that we respond to somebody. We don't like the word, the terminology we use. We don't like this. We don't like that. And the next day or, or that day or later, a couple hours later, we're like, man, I really didn't like that. Whenever they bumped my cup in life, they frustrated me and, and aggravated me. And this, came, this side of me came out and I didn't like that. Here's why you didn't like that. Because you didn't realize what was in the cup until the cup started spilling. And so I want to tell you that, that it's the same thing with, with God. It's the same thing in our lives that whenever your cup is bumped, because I'm telling you, the cup of your life is going to be bumped. It's going to fall off a table. It's going to hit a chair. It's going to spill. Somebody's going to tick you off. Somebody's going to cut you off in traffic. Somebody's not going to agree with your political views. You're going to get in arguments. I know you and your wife are newlyweds and you're goo goo gaga right now, but there's going to be a day where you don't like the way that she did her hair when she woke up in the morning. It's going to start a fight because she's going to ask you what you think about it and you're going to tell her. Make up something instead, right? All this stuff is going to happen and it's going to be difficult and your cup is going to get bumped and it's going to be hard. But can I tell you, you can dictate what spills out of your cup. You can determine what spills out of your cup. The thing is, is in Galatians 5, God actually tells us that you can be a godly father. You can be a godly mother. You can be a godly leader. You can be a godly friend. You can be a godly person. You can spill the right things out of the cup if you allow the light, right things to be in your cup. And we, that's our decision. Can I tell you something? Most of us pray this prayer. And I'm guilty of this, but most of us will pray this prayer. Hey, God, if you could help me be a better person. Can I tell you, don't pray that prayer. Here's what you need to pray. God, if you could show me what I need to do to be closer to you, and then the byproduct is you'll be a better person. Because what spills out of the cup is what's in the cup, and most of us are praying for God to take away symptoms when God's in the business of killing roots. Don't worry about a symptom of anger. Worry about what's causing the anger that happened 10 years ago that you won't talk about to anybody, and you suppressed it so far back that now anytime anybody looks at you the wrong way, now you're offended and mad. Right? Don't worry about being negative all the time. Find out why you're negative all the time. It's probably because you're unhappy with your life. And now what do you need to do to make it so that you're happy with what's going on in your life? You follow what I'm saying? God is in the, in the business of killing roots, not healing symptoms. Because there's, there's a point to where we have a shallow God and a deep God. The shallow God heals uh, uh, symptoms. The deep God kills roots. And so we got to be in this thing. In, in Galatians chapter 5, there's something amazing that begins to take place. And, and it's, it's this thing that he begins to talk about, Paul begins to talk about, called the fruits of the Spirit. And can I, I just before we read them, I just want to tell you this caveat. I say this a lot, but I really just want to kind of expand on it for just a moment. Fruit, the fruit of the Spirit that you bear in your life is not for you. Today, my point is to give you practical applications to walk out of here and your life is going to be noticeably different because you're going to walk closer with God. The truth of the matter is the fruit is not for you. You're not going to walk by an apple tree and see an apple tree eating its own apples. Not going to see it. My neighbor has two peach trees in his yard. Guess what? I've never walked out on my back deck and walked out to my backyard and seen that, that peach tree eating peaches. You know what I have seen? I've seen deer eating peaches. I've seen him grabbing peaches off of it. And you know, we went, my, my family and I, my family and I went apple picking at the end of last year. We went to a place, went apple picking, and y'all, I didn't know there were so many species of pa- apples. It was a little overwhelming. It was a little crazy. And the people working, they said, hey, you can grab an apple, take a bite, and make sure that's the one that you want before you fill up a basket of them, right? And I was like, well, good, because I don't want terrible apples. I just thought there was red apples and green apples. I didn't know there was gold apples and red apples and green apples and blue apples. And all, there's not really blue apples. If there was, I wouldn't have them. And all these other kind of things, right? And so here's what I saw. We saw families grabbing apples off the tree, and they'd take a bite of the apple, And they would say that one of two things. I heard both of them. One of them was, man, this one's really sweet. It tastes really good. Let's get a few of these. And so they'd walk down the, aisle, the row of trees and they'd grab that flavor. Or they'd say, this one's not ripe or this one's bitter and I don't want these. And so they would go to another row and start uh, tasting those apples, figuring out what they want. Here's the thing. For us, that's the same thing people do to us. 
The fruits of the Spirit are not for you. You don't eat your own fruit. It's everybody you're connected to that begins to eat of the fruit that you're developing in your life of the Spirit. And now as Psalm 34 and 8 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Do you know how they do that? By your life and the fruit that you bear. The fruit is not for you, it's for everybody in your family, it's for everybody at your workplace, it's for every one of your friends, it's for everybody at your church to go, oh man, this is some good fruit. They talk about Jesus, they talk about God, they talk about the Holy Spirit, they talk about all these things, this is good, or they're going to say this, this is terrible, and the junk that you're telling me is nothing but a lie, and you're living a two-face, and God is not as good as you say he is. And there's a lot of people that would go, well, that's not fair. Nobody said it was fair. It's just truth. People are going to eat your fruit and to make their decision on God based on the fruit that they get from you. Now, listen, listen. Some of you are like, man, that means I got to be perfect all the time. No, it doesn't. It means I got to be submitted all the time. I have to always be submitted to God. And that's what we're going to talk about. As, and, and, and dads, uh, uh, parents, leaders, uh, just followers of Jesus, I want to tell you this today. You may have walked in today feeling like you don't know how to draw closer to God. But you're going to walk out today knowing exactly what it means to draw closer to God because fruit is the example or the exhibition of drawing closer to God. Amen? You ready? The first, there's a few things I want to point out in this. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, it says this. It says, but I say... So, it, so Paul is writing down all these things and he says, he says, I love in verse 15 what he says. He says, but if you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. In other words, he's like, if you're going to talk junk about each other, don't be taken up by them. You just worry about walking with God. And so he says this in verse 16, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Can I tell you something? That we have to know about the fruits of the Spirit. The fruit of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit will always war with one another. You cannot walk with the Spirit and fulfill the flesh. Well, what are you talking about, Pastor? That doesn't even make sense to me. Here's what I'm talking about. You know, the flesh, and he goes on. It, it, Paul talks about it throughout the rest of the scriptures. He says, now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are, and then he lists them. I'm, I'll read them out for you. Immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and, 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 uh, and things like these of which I forewarned you. He goes on and he says, all these things are fruits of the, of the flesh. These are things that get you nowhere. These are things that are not profitable. These are things that are not good. These are things that God is not all about. And he says, you have to choose. And I'm here to tell you today, you have to choose one or the other. You can't choose to go, you know what? I feel like doing this and I know God's not big on it. And I know it's not of the spirit, but I'm going to do it anyway. And then go, oh, you know what, God, I love you so much. I'm going to live my life for you. We have to choose every single morning. I'm preaching a hard word today, but the truth is, every single morning we have to decide who we're submitting to. We're either going to submit to God and His Spirit, or we're going to submit to our own flesh. Our own flesh. And we're going to look at what submitting to God and His own Spirit does in just a moment, but if we submit to our own flesh, can I tell you, it's the things that He listed in here that, that make us, that are just dangerous for us. You know, and, and, and the things of the flesh are like this. Whenever I decide that I'm mad at Phil about something, so I go over here to Pastor Travis, and I start talking to Pastor Travis about how terrible Phil is, and I'm mad at him and all these other things. Here's what happened. I should have, according to the Bible, gone to Phil because I have a problem with Phil. But now I've decided to forego what's good in the Spirit, what the Bible says, and I've decided to go talk to Travis. And so now what was a problem between two people is now dissension between three. And then the third person's got to get it off his chest because he don't know what to do with it. So he's got to get advice. So then he goes and talks to John. And now a two-person issue has become a four-person issue. And it's destroying four people rather than two people figuring something out. Fulfilling things of the flesh or the godly way, the spiritual way, is to go, you know what? Hey, there's grace and there's mercy. And the Bible tells me I need to go to my brother when I have a problem with my brother. Not 15 other people on Facebook, but to my brother. And I go to that and then I begin submitting to the Spirit. It's this. God, what do you want me to do today? And that's what I'll do. I, I get asked all the time, Pastor, how do I know that I'm growing with God and, and that I'm doing better with that? And, and I wish there was an algorithm that I could just tell you, like, if you pray this long and you read this many chapters and you do these things, then you're growing and you're doing great. I can't tell you that. Because here's the thing. There's some days I sit down to read three chapters a day, which is what I try to do, and I'll get through two verses and they've slapped me in the face so hard and they've impacted my life so hard I can't get past them. And so I sit down for the rest of the day and I just think on those. But then there's times where I'm going to read three chapters and I'm like, uh, I'll read another two. 
Because I can't give you that, but here's what I can say. Go read Galatians 5. How am I doing at submitting my flesh to the Spirit? In fact, um, it's amazing what is said because many times what we think is the, the things of the flesh, well, that means I just can't have fun. That's a lie. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23, if you can throw that on the screen. I love what Paul actually says here. And if you'll give me a moment, I don't want you to read this and then cut out. I want you to hear my explanation of it. But he says this. He says, all things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful, but not all things edify. And so here's what Paul is saying. He's saying you can do whatever you want to do. Can I tell you today? You can do whatever you want to do. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to serve God. That's your choice. You don't have to give your life to Jesus. That's your choice. You don't have to worship. Your choice. You don't have to do any of that stuff. It's our choice. I can do anything I want to do, but I have to understand this. Anything I want to do is not what I should do. I can do all things, but I should not do all things. He says, not all things are profitable. And then he says, again, you can do whatever you want to do, but not all those things are going to edify you, God, or others. Can I tell you, there's two filters Paul gives us, if we'll leave that up on the screen, to filter everything through, and it's this. Is it profitable, and does it edify? That's just two simple questions we have to ask ourselves in any reaction. Is it profitable? Here's what that means. Does it move me forward in a life with Christ? Does it move me forward? You ever heard this phrase? My mom used to tell me this all the time growing up. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all, right? Here's what they're essentially saying. If you can't say something nice that's going to progress their life and edify them and make them feel better, then you need to close your mouth and stop talking. There's, I think there's a little birdie that needs to follow us around sometimes and say that. Hey, if that's not going to benefit them and edify them and edify you and edify God, then just close your mouth. Right? What if that, there's a little birdie that sat right there? Probably most of us wouldn't talk 90% of the time. I know there's times where, for me, God would be like, just be quiet, Brandon. Just, just be quiet, right? He says, is it profitable? Does it push you forward? Does it progress you towards the plan and the purpose that God has for you? I'm telling you, this is practical today. Is it profitable? I know, I know. I feel like the Holy Spirit looks at us sometimes and goes, I know you can do anything you want to do, and trust me, you've let me know that. You've told me a hundred times, well, I can do this. I'm a grown man. I can do this. I'm a grown woman. I can do whatever I want to do. Yes, you can. But does it profit me? You know, businessmen, you know what they look at? They look at most of them, look at one line at the bottom of the, the flow chart, at the bottom of the income expense report, they look at it and it's the profit line, the profit margin. How much profit am I making? How much am I bringing in? How much good is this doing me? Some of us need to look at our lives and go, how much profit am I making in my decisions? How much good are these decisions making for me? Right? And then he says, uh, you can do anything, but does it edify? And what does that mean? That means to lift up, to progress, to lift someone higher, to make them better. Is what I'm saying to somebody going to edify? Because I can tell you, go back to the example, my problem with Phil. I'm not edifying him or helping him at all by going to two other people and talking junk. In fact, what I'm doing is I'm tearing him down, me down, and I'm taking those two in a chain with me. I'm chaining them to the problem, and now we're all going down. Why? Because it's not edifying. It's also not edifying of God for me to go, oh man, I love God. I love my church. I love Jesus. I give him everything. And then on Facebook, every time we get there, we're talking junk about people. Anybody? Come on, y'all with me, right? I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm just saying like, we've got to be careful. Does it edify and does it profit? Are you with me today? And so that's what, that's the two things that we have to look at. And in and, 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 and the fruit of the Spirit is so helpful in those things. So if we're going to go to the fruit of the flesh, just know there's repercussions. They're not always going to be profitable. It's not always going to be edifying. It's going to be painful. That means that we've got to cut off some things, we'll get to in a minute, that may not be profitable for us. And we may go, I can do that. Sure you can. You can overspend. You can get in debt. You can overindulge. You can be drunk every day of your life. You don't have to go to work. You can do all those things. You can do anything you want to do. It's your life. You do it. But that doesn't mean it's going to profit you. That doesn't mean that it's going to edify God or you or anybody else. We have to know that we can make any decision. But our decisions also come with repercussions. Anybody with me today? And so the second thing that is in verses 22 and 23, and it's where 
The fruit of the Spirit is laid out, and it says this, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit. So Paul has just written all these fruits of the flesh, right? And then he goes, here's the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And then he makes this one little caveat, this one little statement at the end of it. Against such things, there is no law. Now, we know that scripturally they're talking about the Old Testament law, but here's what I also believe that that can, in conjunction with that, mean that those things, the fruit of the Spirit, there's nothing greater in your life that will take any more precedence with any more power than the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the flesh has no power over the fruit of the Spirit. There is nothing bigger than the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's nothing greater, it says, against these things, against such things, such as the fruit of the Spirit. There is no law. I want to hear, I want you to hear me today. When you begin to walk so closely with God that the fruit of the Spirit is coming out of your life, there is nothing any greater in your life that you have ever experienced in your life than the fruits of the Spirit because now you're walking so close to God that His character is oozing out of you. His power is oozing out of me. His his, uh, royalty is coming through me. I don't have to live a life asking for forgiveness. I'm living a life from forgiveness. And when I realize that, it's changed my life. To where I can go, you know what? God, I'm going to mess it up. You know I'm going to mess it up. Which is why you're changing the fruit that I bear every single day of my life. But God, I don't have to live my life scared to death that I'm not forgiven. I get to live my life redeemed and excited and joyful because I'm a child of the king. And I reign in the kingdom with you because I am forgiven. Because I'm, I, I, I am exhibiting the fruits of the spirit because of that, right? And so we've got we've to see what the fruit of the spirit does in our lives. And the fruit is not a checklist. But what you're connected to determines the fruit. Go to John chapter 15, verses 1 and 2 very quickly with me this morning. It says this. It says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Jesus is teaching something so powerful. He says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. Here's what he's saying. He's saying, I'm the vine. I am the the center source. And here's the thing about fruit, right? Fruit is this. Fruit doesn't come from the vine. Fruit comes from the branches. You don't walk up to an apple tree and see a bunch of apples growing off the trunk. But you see apples hanging off the branches. Who are the branches? We are the branches. Our job in this life, as we live it for the kingdom of God, is to produce fruit that others want to pick. To produce fruit, to look at people and go, the vine is still alive. The vine is still healthy. I am connected to the vine of Christ. If I don't like, hear me, if I don't like the the fruit that I'm producing, maybe I'm connected to the wrong vine. Maybe I need to guess and go, God, where, what vine am I connecting? I don't like the financial fruit I'm connecting. Well, then your finances are probably connected to the wrong vine. I don't like the fruit that my marriage is producing. Well, my marriage is probably connected to the wrong vine. I don't like the fruit that my life is uh, 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 exhibiting. Well, you're probably connected to the wrong vine. Let me, let me show you some other caveat real quick in this story. So, so Phil, John, and Travis, and Pastor Chris could come on up here for me real quick on the fly. Quick, quick thing. Just, just leave up that last verse real quick. Verse 2 of John 15. It says that, it says that uh, each branch that does not bear fruit, he takes away, right? And then he says, every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. Can I, this hit me this week as I was studying. It's just a little caveat, just a little sidetrack here. But the truth of the matter is, your most successful seasons may be the season that you're pruned the most. Your most successful, most glorious, most fruit-producing season in your life may be the season where God is, is pruning back the most. And here's why. And it's counterproductive because we're like, oh, we're producing fruit? He'll leave us alone. We're good. But God goes, no, I need to prune back because if I prune back, it gives you more capacity to produce more fruit in your life. So it is entirely possible that I can be a vine that produces amazing fruit, but I'm going through some major pruning in my life. And here's why. Check this. So if Chris is producing great fruit, right? Chris is doing an amazing job. God's got, he's drawn closer to God. There's fruit in his life, right? And, 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 and let's say Pastor Travis is producing great fruit, right? He's doing amazing things. He's drawn closer to God. There's great fruit in his life, right? Let's say that they're basically a tree. And so these, these branches are doing well. Phil and John are, you know, they're just not producing too much, you know? 
And the Bible says that these two guys that are producing are probably going to go through a pruning season. So while they're producing fruit, they're like, yeah, I'm drawing closer to God. I feel closer to God than I've ever felt. I'm worshiping. I'm reading the Bible. I'm getting inspiration and revelation. I've never gotten the kingdom of God. It's great. I'm, I'm doing all these things. This stuff is great. Like, God, I just feel you. And then at the same time, there's people leaving their life. There's hardships. There's difficulties. There's frustrations that are leaving and hitting them. And they're like, God, why? And he's going, because there's capacity for growth left in you. And if I don't cut it back, then you won't ever see it. But here's the thing. He says that if you don't produce fruit at the right time, I will cut it off and throw it into the fire. Here's why. Because here's what most of us would do. Most of us on a very natural level, on a very spiritual level internally, we would go, all right, this area and this area are not producing good fruits in my life. I'm not doing well. I'm, this is dead areas in my life that God needs to cut away. Maybe I can revive this area. And so we take the energy from the fruit producing area and we put it to the dead area to revive this branch. And then we take the fruit producing energy and we take it to this one. And here's what happens. Now this vine begins to die with this vine because I wouldn't let this vine go away. I tried to resuscitate it, take the energy from the fruit producing branch to, to try to revive it, right? And so now I've got four branches that are going to die. The whole, the whole plant's going to shrivel up, never produce fruit again. And here's why. Simply because I I wouldn't cut off two areas of my life that needed to go because I didn't want to go through the pruning whenever it was fruitful I didn't want to say hey this is a great season in my life this has got to go I, I, I'm growing closer to God I made this decision I'm gonna get closer to God I'm gonna live by the spirit I'm gonna live with a secret weapon I'm gonna, I'm gonna the fruit of the spirit all these things I'm gonna do this stuff in this area of my life's got to go I can't I can't do this stuff anymore I can't go out late at night I got to be home with my kids I can't do this I can't do that like all these things I got to cut these areas out of my life but if I don't, then can I tell you what's going to happen? It's going to, it's going to kill the whole tree. And so the fruit that God wants to produce will be gone because it's like these two are doing great, but then all of a sudden it's... That's why most of our spiritual lives fizzle out like that. Because we get really excited and we're like, I'm giving all my energy here. I'm giving all my energy here. And we're going to grow and you see the fruit and you're like, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then there's a branch that you don't want God to cut. And then he's like, I'm telling you, if you don't cut this one, it's going to kill that one too. You've got to do them both. Can you all give them a hand real quick? Thank you guys for your, for your help. We've got to understand that, that the fruit of the Spirit comes from the vine we're connected to. And the last thing is in verse 24, and we'll read 25 in just a minute, but verse 24 says, Now those, I want you to hear the, the promise in this. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. Here's what, here's what Paul's saying. You don't have to be bound and held captive by the fruits of the flesh ever again. Because when Jesus hung on that cross and he breathed his last and his blood trickled down that cross and it filled the sand, he, not, he didn't hang there just as him. He hung there as you. And every fleshly desire that will ever try to pull you away from God, we, He has crucified on that cross. And when He hung there, He hung there for you. And He hung there for me. So that everything that I think I have to do to be validated by everybody else in my life, I don't have to do that stuff because I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus and by the cross of my Savior in my life. I don't have to do that. Because I've crucified it. Will I struggle? Yeah. There's not a person in here that doesn't struggle with something. But the struggle's not the problem. The giving in is the problem. Because I have been crucified with Christ. And not I, but He who lives within me. Verse 25, I, I love this. I love this statement on, on 25. It's the Passion Translation. It says this, it says, we must live in the Holy Spirit and follow after Him. Verse 26, so may we never be arrogant or look down on one another. For each of us is an original. Hear me, you are an original today. Dad, I don't care how bad you've messed it up until today, you're an original. The call is still the same. Mom, I don't care, you're an original and the call is still there. You're an original. We must forsake all jealousy that diminishes the value 
of others. I love the way that that says it. Just lift that up. We must live in the Holy Spirit and follow after Him. Can I tell you what that means to me? The fruit of the Spirit is not something that automatically comes when I pray a prayer. But it's something that comes as I walk the journey to the destination. Most of us get so focused on the destination. It's like, I'm going there. I'm going to get there. But you know where the lessons are learned? On the journey. I'll get to the destination if I just put one foot in front of the other. And can I tell you, that's what God's teaching me right now. I see multiple campuses, thousands of people, leaders like crazy going into secular businesses and transforming them for the kingdom of God and being very successful. I see so many amazing things coming out of this. I see us being able to, 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 to fund by thousands and thousands of dollars every single year. Other ministries that are reaching people and plant uh, so many churches and do all these amazing things. But here's what God's teaching me. Brandon, just put one foot in front of the other. Just keep putting your foot in front of the other because if you keep taking the journey, then eventually you'll get to the destination. You just got to be faithful. And I'm here to tell you, I know you're sitting there and you're like, I'm not doing good at love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I'm not doing good at some of those or maybe all of those. But can I tell you this? You will. You will. When I wake up every single day and say, I'm connecting to the vine of Christ. I am showing others that he is alive. He is good. He is gracious. He is faithful. He is merciful. He is awesome. And I am showing others that by my fruit that he is good. I will connect to the vine of Christ. I will connect to him because of this. Because the fruit takes time. I can't plant an apple tree tree and get an apple today. Remember the peach tree I told you about next door? Those those peaches, those peach trees have been there over five years and they've just started being able to, to pick them. You have to let certain fruits, you have to let certain harvests come in and go out and rot on the tree before the good fruit can come in. Some of you, you got some fruit you need to let rot on the tree. But it takes time and you'll get there because God is good. And people will start looking and eating your fruit. Lord, my God, he is everything you said he could be and more. If you would stand to your feet with me today, I just want to pray over you and ask you one quick question today. If there's anybody in the room that would say, Pastor, I need to give Jesus my life. I've never prayed that prayer. I've never submitted my life to him. I've never said I need a new life with him. I've never done all those things. But, Pastor, I want to do that today by raising my hand. If you would go ahead and close your eyes. If you would just say, Pastor, I've never given him my life. But today's the day I want to submit my life to him. If that's you, would you just raise your hand right where you are? I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to call you to the front. I'm not going to do any of that. I just want to pray over you today and give you a resource to help you. Any hands in the room? Now, here's what I want to do. I just want to pray over people. I just want to pray that God will make us more aware of His Spirit and able to produce His fruit. Father, we honor You. We praise You. Thank You. Happy Father's Day to You. You are the ultimate Father. You are the one that makes it all possible. And we love You today. God, I pray that as we walk out of here today, that we would have this renewed passion and this sense of urgency to draw closer to you. And as we draw closer to you, that the fruits of the Spirit would become real to us. And God, that we would exhibit everything you want us to exhibit in our life. God, that we would exhibit everything that you are. The character of you would come through us and it would impact others' lives. God, I honor you. Let us walk out of here. Thank you for giving us another day, another breath to make a difference. Let us be more aware of you every single day. God, we honor you and praise you as we connect to the vine of Jesus Christ. We honor you and praise you. And if you believe God's doing something great, would you say amen and put your hands together this morning?